किया और सनातन धर्म को अपना लिया और अब उनका जीवन ही भक्ति योग बन गया है मंत्र योग बन गया है आपने वर्ल्ड रिलीफ नेटवर्क स्थापित किया आप वैदिक फ्रेंड्स एसोसिएशन के फाउंडर और प्रेसिडेंट हैं आपने बहुत सी किताबें लिखी हैं द सीक्रेट टीचिंग ऑफ द वेदास द यूनिवर्सल पाथ टू एनलाइटनमेंट द वैदिक प्रोफेसिस एंड न्यू लुक इन टू द फ्यूचर हाउ द यूनिवर्स वॉज क्रिएटेड एंड आवर पर्पज इन इट टूवर्ड्स वर्ल्ड पीस सींग द यूनिटी बिटवीन अस ऑल द की टू रियल हैप्पीनेस एंड प्रूफ ऑफ वैदिक कल्चर्स ग्लोबल एक्सिस्टेंस सो बाय आपकी तालियों की गड़गड़ाहट से स्वागत करें श्री स्टीफन नैब जी का थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर अलाउंग मी टू बी हियर एंड फॉर इनवाइटिंग मी आई वॉन्ट टू स्पेशली थैंक डॉक्टर गुमास्तर फॉर corresponding with me and convincing me I should come here. It's been a very nice and well-organized festival, and I'm sure we'll all learn a lot about the relativity and the importance of the Ramayan as can be applied in this day and age. Now, I do have to ask one thing. Can you all understand my English? It's okay? One thing I've learned about speaking in India, speak slowly, clearly, and if the microphone goes off, speak loudly. <laughs> and that's happened many times in the past. So anyway, hopefully we won't go through that. My main message is, in the Ramayan, on the need for a proper leader, is to not only point out that the indications in the Ramayan, which talk about the situation of a leaderless or unqualified leader in society is relevant today by the symptoms. Even though they were described thousands of years ago, we can still see these symptoms today. So this especially points out how the Ramayan held views on the means for a harmonious society and what helped provide or prevent it. This section outlines is how society without a leader or without one that is qualified will never be harmonious and will actually exhibit symptoms that will prevent such a united society. Although these describe a time thousands of years ago when facilities were different, it can still be compared to what we would expect to see in this day and age. The reason why I wanted to elaborate on these teachings is that as we look around the world, many parts of it seem to be falling apart with each passing day. So how can we change that? It is time that people of the world understand what to look for in a leader if we are going to live harmoniously with ourselves or with nature. It is time that we know who to elect if we are going to have a leader who provides the right kind of protection and guidance, and who holds and practices the proper virtue if we are going to steer society in the right direction. Now these verses that I'm going to read are just a few from the Ayodhya Kanda, Canto 67, verses 9 through 38. And you can look these up yourself if you'd like. This is described by Mark and Dea and other great sages to urge Vashishta to install a qualified prince on the throne. And in verse 9 it says, A land destitute of a ruler, the thundering cloud wreathed with lightning does not stretch or drench the earth with rainwater. So, what does this mean? We see that drought is a common factor when there is no proper ruler or when society is misdirected. And anybody who lives in America knows that it may be considered the land of the plenty, but the West Coast has been under a drought for a few years now. So why is that the case? So in such a situation, people no longer work in harmony with nature so that it reciprocates with the needs of the people. People often feel that nature is something to dominate and control and demand whatever we want from it and to take what we want. But actually, we are a part of nature and should be in harmony with it. 
That's the Vedic perspective, and that's what's also taught in the Ramayana. Otherwise, nature merely reflects the mass consciousness of humanity who inhabit the planet, and thus drought is not uncommon. So we have to understand that, that the mass consciousness of humanity will basically provide the means by which we either do or do not have the resources that we need. The more decrepit, the more deceitful, the more dominating we try to be when it comes to nature, not only will nature withhold the resources, but then also we contaminate and pollute the resources anyway. So then we lose the very means by which we need to survive. So another text is text number 15, which says, in a rulerless land, festivals in honor of the deities, in which actors and dancers exhibit their art in a high ecstatic mood, and convivial gatherings promoting the welfare of the state do not gather strength. In other words, they don't happen. So again, this shows how a sophisticated culture, like Vedic culture, for example, will be set to ruin by adharmic forces if we allow them to gain strength. So, this is the, so the point is, without a ruler who can gather the means to defend the culture and the people, society itself will become ruined. Text number uh, 16, it says, in a rulerless land, parties to a lawsuit are not able to have their disputes settled. And I find this particularly interesting because here in India, for example, you know that many times lawsuits take months or even years to settle. Without a qualified root leader, who can execute an efficient system of law and order, the court system becomes increasingly backlogged with cases that are not resolved, not because they can't be dealt with, but because of a lack of efficiency and honesty in the judicial system and the interest of the courts to resolve such cases without accepting bribes and other interests in order to solve the case, whatever that may be. The point of it is, without a proper ruler to maintain the judicial system, the whole system goes haywire. And that's what has to be corrected. With a proper ruler, he sets up an efficient system by which cases become resolved quickly, efficiently, and effectively, and they don't go on for years or months. Text 17, it says, in a rulerless land, Virgins, decked with gold ornaments, do not, for their part, go united to gardens to sport at dusk for fear of being abducted or violated by miscreants. Now remember, this was talked about thousands of years ago. But the point of it is, these days, no one can go out at night or even in the daylight without the risk of being robbed or abducted. Now, I don't know about Jabalpur, but I've come from Detroit, Michigan. And Detroit, Michigan is a tough town. People get robbed, murdered, or abducted every day. And this is because of a leaderless society where either the mayor has lost control, the police chief has lost control, or they're trying to gain control of the situation after it has already gone run amok. So without good leaders, criminals know they can get away with many criminal acts. And it is only with a strong leader that this can begin to change. So in text 21 it says, in a rulerless land, the sound of plucking the bowstring with the palm produced by kshatriyas uninterruptedly discharging arrows while practicing the use of bows is not heard. So this merely indicates that those with, like the police or soldiers meant to protect the people are in limited numbers and are not around to keep law and order. This is usually because the leaders put their interests and priorities in other directions rather than in protecting 
law-abiding citizens or in building a strong military or police force to defend the country and its citizens. Once again, this is a part of the Ramayan that can be applied to this day and age to give us insight in how to elect a leader and also how to organize society so that, first of all, we can all live peacefully, we can all live happily, we can collectively develop society, and also that we know and understand the purpose of life and can achieve that purpose of life on a spiritual basis. So these are some of the important points. Now, we jump to text 29 where it says, a state without a ruler is really no better than rivers without water, or a woodland without grass, or cows without a keeper. This shows you how useless society can be without a proper leader. So, text 36, it says, if there is no king demarcating good and evil in the world, oh, this world will be reduced to utter darkness, as it were, and nothing can be clearly perceived. So in other words, a land without a qualified ruler is a wasteland, when, wherein no real good of life and no real goal is understood. So, nor is it practice and mere existence, merely trying to exist with the attempt to avoid so many problems is all that is left to achieve, and even that also with great struggle. Now, does that sound anything like what we see today? So with this as the standard, such a society is reduced to utter ignorance of the true purpose of life. This is why the Ramayan explains these points so that we know what a proper ruler is, but so that we can automatically guide society so that everybody can achieve the proper spiritual goal of life. Otherwise, it is considered human life is nothing more than being wasted. However, now that we have seen some of what the Ramayan presents as dangers of a lack of real leadership, there are also a few verses that give insight to what a real ruler should be. And this points out the power of such a king by these qualities if he possesses them. And we jump to text 33 where it says, just as the eye ever strives for the good of the body by serving as a guide to it and showing it the right path, so does the king who is the fountain of truth and righteousness, ever strive for the good of the state. This is the ultimate purpose of the king. His goal should be always working for the upliftment and the safekeeping of the citizens within that country. Text 34, it says, the king is truthfulness and virtue incarnate. The king constitutes the nobility of birth in men of a high pedigree, and the king is the mother as well as the father. The king is also the benefactor of men. So this is the ultimate purpose of a good ruler. Now, however, this next verse is also very interesting because text 35 says, even Yama, the god of retribution, Kubera, son of Vishrava, the god of riches, Indra, the, god, the ruler of gods, and the very mighty Varuna, the deity presiding over water, are outstripped by a king of excellent conduct by virtue of such conduct, inasmuch as he combines in himself the virtues of the above named deities. In other words, when he accumulates all the righteousness within that a king is supposed to have, he basically supersedes and can supersede the influence of even Yama, Kubera, Indra, and Varuna, according to this particular verse. Of course, this may not be so easily found in this age of Kali Yuga, but the point of it is we need to know what the standard is. We may find or we may not find that standard, but we should go for the highest standard possible. So anyway, I'm also going to be speaking tomorrow night 
about this time. So I'm going to speak at that time about the glories of Lord Ram and what the kingdom was like under his jurisdiction. And I'll also speak about the fact that the Ramayan mentions that the king also takes one-sixth of the karma of all of his subjects. So whether it's bad karma, whether it's good karma, the king takes on one-sixth of that, which is the reason why a king should continue to patrol his jurisdiction and root out all corruption, because that corruption becomes part of his own karma. And that's also why the Manu Samhita says that for a leader who is incapable of leading his subjects or rooting out karma, his future becomes very dark. And that doesn't mean just his future in this life, but also in the next life. It becomes very dark. So in this age of Kali Yuga, it is basically taught that for a leader, a leader can be a very dangerous position if you don't know what you're doing. Because many times leaders try to think that as soon as I become a leader, I can just manipulate the situation according to the way I want it. And that's definitely going to take one person, that person, and all of his cohorts into the darker levels of the universe and the darker levels of their future. So anyway, I'll talk a little bit more about that tonight. But the point of it is, these are the qualities uh, that take place, or the symptoms that take place when there is no proper leader in society, how we should understand who and what a proper leader is, how to elect such a leader, and the fact is that the Ramayan is a living document giving wisdom that she should be uh, referenced, should be used as counsel, and should be used on a daily basis so that we can guide ourselves and society in the right direction. So this is the benefit of understanding the Ramayana. So anyway, thank you very much, and Jai Shri Ram.